I'm Elizabeth Walters, and I'll be presenting about the War Over Methods. This began with the Milan Conference in 1880. This was the first international conference for deaf education. It took place in Milan, Italy, with 164 educators. 163 of them were hearing, meaning only one was deaf. They made a lot of decisions about deaf education, some of which were very logical, things like the amount of students that you can have in a class, limiting that at 10, and the necessity to write more books about deaf education. However, the primary decision they made, quoted here, is, the convention considering the incontestable superiority of articulation over signs in restoring the deaf mute to society and giving him a fuller knowledge of language declares that the oral method should be preferred to that of signs in education and the instruction of deaf mutes. Essentially what this means is that the Milan Conference banned the use of sign language in education. The effects of this were known as the dark ages of deaf education. Signs and gestures were completely banned in schools. Teachers hitting students who signed or even gestured when they spoke with a ruler or tying their hands together behind their back or forcing them to sit up. This didn't only affect students. The amount of deaf professionals greatly decreased after this ban because they were suddenly seen in a much more negative light. In addition, this ban essentially meant that deaf teachers could not have jobs because if they're going to be models for spoken language, they're a bad choice. This overall span caused generations of deaf people to experience extreme language deprivation. This decision was formally reversed in 2010. This means that there was over 130 years of systemic autism in deaf education. This is going to continue to affect generations of deaf people for years to come. These are two paintings done by deaf artists about the situation. In this one, people are shown shooting ASL. And in this one, we have a whole bunch of um, cut off hands as a reflection of what was happening to deaf people's hands after this ban. That was the Milan Conference. Some proponents on either side of this war over methods were Alexander Graham Bell and Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet. Al Most people think of Alexander Graham Bell as the inventor of the telephone. Great guy, right? In reality, his primary focus was on deaf education. Both his mother and his wife were deaf, and he was willing to sign or do whatever he needed to do to communicate with deaf adults. However, he believed that it was absolutely essential that deaf children be taught to speak, and that they should not be allowed to embrace the aspects of deaf culture. He believed that by socializing with each other, deaf people were creating their own race, and that this was an inferior race to hearing people. And this race needed to be eradicated, and the way to do this was to stop deaf people from marrying other deaf people. He believed that this could happen by banning the use of sign language in schools, only having hearing teachers, and replacing residential schools with day schools. A quote from him is, those who believe, as I do, that the production of a defective race of human beings would be a great calamity to the word We'll examine carefully the causes that lead to the intermarriage of the deaf with the object of applying a remedy. A.G. Bell continues to have an impact on deaf education through the A.G. Bell Association for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing. This group holds a lot of power when it comes to financial resources for deaf education. Their mission statement, as of today, is still working globally to ensure that people who are deaf and hard of hearing can hear and talk, which feels like a little bit of an oxymoron, considering we just said they were deaf and we're going to say that you're going to learn to hear. The AG Bell Association continues to believe that listening in spoken language is superior to sign languages. On the opposite side, Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet. He was inspired to figure out how to teach deaf children after meeting a young deaf girl. He traveled to Europe to figure out how deaf students were taught there in the, attempt, in the hopes that he would be able to bring that back to America. He first saw some oral methods and was dissatisfied with the results. So then he saw what the French were doing, and they were using sign language with deaf students in order to teach them. He liked these results a lot better and brought back a deaf French man who had been through the whole education system there to help him create the first American school for the deaf. His grandson, Edward Minor Gallaudet, founded Gallaudet University, the first deaf college for deaf people. 
naming it after his grandfather, Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet. ASL was always encouraged at Gallaudet, even through this war over methods and Alexander Graham Bell's actions. The, having Gallaudet still continue to use ASL and still being a place for deaf people to gather allowed ASL to survive through this ban and allowed deaf culture to continue to grow. Gallaudet University still exists and is still considered the best of the best when it comes to education of the deaf.